This one, they're both on. Welcome to the regular board meeting, Wednesday, November 18th, 2020, at 9.30 a.m. Um, we, I want to let those who are following us on Facebook know that we are having some internet problems that um, we are trying to correct, but um, we don't really have much control over. However, we will be still posting um, the video on YouTube as, as soon as possible and on the website. And hopefully the internet uh, will correct itself during sometime during the meeting. Um, we'll be putting a notice on um, dispatch also to let members know uh, where to find the meeting. Okay, we um, have uh, four directors, one absent. Um, Mr. Mummy has been released from board meetings while he treats uh, his cancer. He's doing well. Um, we keep him advised on everything, and he has been excused. Okay, um, we have four people. We have a quorum. Um, please rise for... Okay, do we have anyone who wants to do an invocation this morning? Okay, we will have a moment of silence and reflection. Turn for the I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag and pledge allegiance to thee, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Okay, we'll start with uh, the meetings from the general board meeting on October 21st, 2020. Do we have any comments or questions on the minutes? We're all good. Okay, um, can I have a motion to approve minutes? Move to approve the minutes from the last board meeting. Second. Second. All in favor? Minutes are approved unanimously, less uh, absent board member. Okay, Secretary's <laughs> report. Um, on behalf of Mr. Rummy, I have no correspondence. Unless any of you receive any correspondence? Motel revenue for October, $29,621. Good for us. Member service, I have a report on lots sold, transfers, resale certificate for $29,250, $2,950. Bank balances. <clears throat> Texas Community Bank, as of 11 17, 
Checking had thirty thousand thirteen cents. Credit card one hundred sixty-five thousand nine hundred eighty-four dollars and twelve cents. Money market eight thousand five hundred ninety-three eighty-two. Bank and trust Los Morris has six hundred thirty-two dollars and ninety-six cents. Restricted fund three hundred and eighty-six thousand two hundred and twenty-six dollars and no cents. General fund three thirty-one oh sixty-five eighty-seven. Historical four hundred seventy-two dollars and ninety cents, and the tax account nine thirty-nine thousand four hundred fifty-five dollars and thirty-one cents. Fort Clark profit and loss for October 2020. Gross profit was $293,256.72. Our expenses were $214,866.44 for a net income of $78,370.26. The restricted fund for October income was $5,192.20, total expenses $1,997.91, for a net income of $3,193.29. A Los Morris profit loss for October. Gross profit was $1,281.38. Total expenses was $1,362.88. For a net income loss of $81.50. Let's drink more beer, folks. The Net income before the bad debt and depreciation, the net income was $78,370.28. Depreciation, $11,730.75. And the bad debt expense was $22,804.20. For net income before estimated bad debts and depreciation of $112,905.23. That's it. I don't have a cumulative from last October to now. Or no, from October. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> we are in October. <laughs> I know, but I don't, you know, October, the cumulative is October. Yeah, the restricted fund balance. Um, yeah, I, I think I gave that. Oh, okay. I have a breakdown of it. That's what I guess I have. Oh, you did! Oh, oh, I just knew what that shout was for. <laughs> Hold on, I'm holding the dam. I've been... I've got my finger in the dike. Anyway, um, I can still read it. It's water up. The breakdown of the restricted fund. The restricted fund balance was $384,929.73. The letter of credit guarantee is $152,000. The amount owed to preservation, $22,500.71. So the available money to the restricted fund is $210,429.02. Hey, can I have uh, any questions on the treasurer's report? Um, when, um, I think it's quite more for Mr. Peterson. Um, on the daily balance sheet, for the money market account, I believe we made, um, if 
a recommendation that once a month we were going to give a hundred dollars to kind of keep that account going for expenses. So it's the same balance as last month. Um, I have a question, and I think it's my memory is just uh, my uh, personal memory is is the, probably the problem this morning. But um, why do we have bad debt, bad debt expense under restricted fund? <coughs> Should not be. Uh, I know I've had this discussion with Randy as far as why we're taking some of the bad debt and applying it to the reserve fund because we're not supposed to be. Well, so. it just could it maybe has something to do with the $4 because I think that does Randy do it based off of billing or does he do it, do it based off of collection? It's supposed to be done off of billing, not collection. So well, then, well, then, but then that would be correct then because if for some reason someone didn't pay. That four dollars, then there would be some bad debt that goes into the structure. But the bad debt should be in two different places. It should be in one area and one in one area. That would be the reserve fund. <coughs> so do the everything, everything we're doing is complicated, and it's complicating the matter of where it should go. It really is okay, wash one way or the other. Okay. It, uh, it needs to be resolved. How I many funds we didn't have, and that's yeah. one of our problems. Well, it's confusing to have it in two different locations. Well, that goes back to the fact that the restricted fund should only be like the actual cash. I, I know. Right. Not, not, not bad debt. Not bill, well, yeah, right. And the problem also is that, is this a duplicate of it somewhere else, or is it separated out for some reason based on a percentage basis? So I guess we need to get together with Jerry and Randy and figure out where this is supposed to go. And keep it needs to be decided exactly how it is going to be dispersed, whether it's going to be billing or going to be receiving. Uh, that is the issue I have with both Jerry and Randy while we're doing such a large amount as far as bad debt when we already have that much uh, right. written off <coughs> and I have not received a satisfied, satisfactory answer right now. But we, we have to kind of be careful with it because if we're running profit and losses to keep track of what we have and what we are expecting, if we're calling bad debt assessments that haven't been paid yet, the overall assessment minus the four dollars goes into the general fund, the four dollars goes into here, so if we're going to track mm -hmm. non-paid assessments as bad debt in general, we have to track that four dollars here too, just so we'll right. know what's not coming okay. in as well. Would you think that when we when we build it, keep it in there, and at the end of the month, once we find out what's collected, then do the transfer over to restriction, I would restricted think. fund? Yeah. Does that make sense? No. So at some point, if we can't, if... if it, it should be... You, it's in your best interest to put it in the restricted fund, straight four dollars and three dollars and one dollars, and making your budget work for the general fund for the rest of it. Yes, it and hasn't so been in there. Be, this is something that had not been in restricted fund before, um, and uh, and it's always been on a build, but not a receive basis, because there's no way to determine how many what you've received for 30, 60, 90 days. Right. So that's why it's on a build basis. So as long as we're working on finding a, a solution that's... I we we have to make our general fund handle all the operations yes. with or without the bad debt. Amount. Right. Right. Yeah. So your restricted fund needs to have an undiluted amount going into it. That's right. Yes. Which is why I asked the question, because this was a, a new thing that was popping up. <clears throat> Okay, um, can we have a, any other questions about the uh, treasurer's report? Um, can we have a motion to approve, please? I move to approve the treasurer's report. Second? I'll second. Okay, all in favor? And approved unanimously. Yes, absolutely. Okay, on to the um, executive officer general manager report. <coughs> you up, Alan? Okay, I'll go ahead and enhance a little bit about the financing since that always seems to be a confusion. Um, we would have been against last year, but really if you go according to last year, we're $6,000 behind where we were last year. It sounds like we were good with $78,000 profit, but that also includes that special assessment that comes in the same time of year. 
So that really means nothing as far as where we're at. But according to the budget, we're actually $21,000 ahead of where we were last year as far as the budget. So with the budget that we've prepared, uh, we're roughly $21,000 ahead of where we budgeted. And that's with the special assessment there. Now, we have three revenue areas that should be where we look at where we make our money besides assessment. One is the RV apart. Uh, the net income in the RV apart was $16,712. The budget was only $9,942. Uh, the motel, we got an a income of $11,597. The budget was only $8,170. And our golf, we did lose $696, but our budget is losing $8,695. So, in our revenue areas, we're doing real well as far as trying to adhere to, you know, trying to keep our money where it needs to be. Uh, according to last year, we're a little bit behind, but that is only because of the accounting area that we had some areas that were not expensed in October of last year that should have been. You know, it was $30,000 that carried over into different months. So that's the reason that we're a little bit behind last year. Um, a lot of this, and most of it, is because of the pipeline business we've had. That has been the cash cow for the last three months. It is tapering off, and it will probably be non-existent in a month, but it may start back up in January, February, we'll find out right now. We still have a little bit, not near as what we've had. Um, where we're going right now is, is the items that we purchased last month. The mowers, the truck, have all been purchased and they are in use. The priority we put was trying to mow the common areas. And if you've seen, most of that has been taken care of. That's what we hit the first month. This next month, we will be hitting... Uh, most of the trees over our roads that may be issues and we'll work on the high but, uh, visibility areas of the road frontage, the park, and again the roads. After that we will start approaching each individual unit and trying to clean up those. Probably the last thing we do is uh, hitting the grass that's invaded the roads that we have in these units and trying to clean that up before spring. So Philip and his crew, we do have a landscape crew that's doing that. If you've seen them on the roads, um, I think you can see the, the changes. We still need a few things of equipment, um, but we can do with what we have for now. And so they're doing a good job there. Um, repairs are currently made on the one bucket truck we have that we use for landscaping. In case anybody is interested, the forklift is being worked on as far as getting it up and running without leaking the oil that has been reported. Uh, and the loader and backhoe, we're trying to repair the second one we have there. Um, this week, remember, starting today, is the brush pickup. We do that in the middle of the month and the end of the month. So for the next three days, if you have brush to, to put out on the street, it will be picked up by maintenance. The RV Park's been doing real well. Kurt and, and Nathan have got it going real well. They, the breakfast club that did the breakfast over the last year uh, has postponed the coming breakfasts until the COVID situation eases up. But they have donated $3,750. Now, uh, that came from John Bridger and Rick Schneider, gave that to us to purchase the golf cart, which is needed. So that is one of the areas of action, is to purchase the rest of the golf cart and get it for there. Uh, one of their projects will be leveling the buildings out there, and this is from their volunteers, they're planning on doing that. We are getting quotes for internet service for the whole thing, and how we will adjust the payment and the fees for the RV park to give them all internet service. Uh, the adult center, 
I had comments that the HVAC was not working in the center building and that has now been repaired. Now we still have an issue with the fitness room uh, lighting. We have purchased LED lights and the electric electrical will be rewired so that back room with the weight, uh, with the uh, <coughs> equipment will be lit at night. The center section HVAC is working. The pool activities room HVAC is not working. Uh, and the fitness room HVAC is not working. So those are items we'll have to address. We have started uh, replacing the exterior lights with LED lights so that we can have some uh, light at night so it's not completely dark. And that's sort of ongoing as far as getting a timer to work it also. Teen Center, we're working on lighting that front entrance since everybody comes in and it's completely dark when they're leaving. There's a common recurrence of electrical and lighting that we have here. Um, and unfortunately, I don't have an electrician on our staff that can address every issue we have, but we're trying to address them each individually. <coughs> the stables, uh, Russell Noah and Linda O'Brien have been working on the stables. And that's going real well. If anybody's looked at the historical uh, south side, there are changes there. Golf course, uh, the water to the course is improving. The, light, the levels come up, so we don't have as many minnows in our pond. Uh, in case anybody is worried about why we're not watering our golf course as much as we usually do, with the with mud selling the water out of our pond, it's lowered the level. When it lowers the level, the minnows get into our pump. When it goes through our pump, the minnows get into our sprinkler system and stop it up. So if you see our guys out there digging in the dirt, that's usually clearing out the sprinklers. And that's been a problem for the last two months. Ice machine has been repaired. <coughs> we are working on uh, information for possibly leasing golf carts. Since I heard are at the very end of their uh, lifespan. <coughs> Creekside work is in progress and we are working on the lighting exterior. Uh, the motel, we've started renovating four rooms. Uh, I really wasn't expecting what I found out when we pulled everything up, so it is a major task to get these done. And the exterior lighting, we've also changed that out to LED. Unfortunately, a lot of the fixtures don't work, so we're replacing those also. So we will try to get those lit in the next couple of months. We have a lot of Christmas decorations going up. Robert Mommy donated a lot of Christmas decorations for us. Uh, if anybody wants to help us decorate, contact Sherry here at the main office, and we will go from there. Excuse my voice. <coughs> Done? That's oh. it. <laughs> okay. That's enough. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Excuse Onward. me. There is one more issue. Oh. No, that will be for our action. Have we looked into uh, many <coughs> screens for the intake? They're there. They're there. <laughs> the problem is when the water gets that low, they get under at the very base, and that's where they come in. This is a problem we've had for years, but any time water levels were low. And hopefully with the work that mud is doing um, on those ponds, and when they stop selling our water... Do we know what that's going to be? The, the water's... The selling the water evidently should be ending, ending this week. The work should be finalizing in the next month. They've done quite a bit. Yeah, because the minnow problems have been around forever, and then when it gets through the screens and the pumps, it's chopped up minnows, so it's pretty yucky and disgusting. Okay, on to committee reports. Um, someone from the airport committee. Okay, just to let people in the airport, um, uh, I was not able to check my uh, board email yesterday, so I apologize to the airport committee if any of you, if you did send me a report, we will do it next month. Um, 
Uh, in fact, that, that was one of the things um, or one air traffic committee. Um, can you give us some information on okay, what's going one on? Okay, the items we get by were the lower from uh, Sam, and this last Monday, not this last, but two weeks ago, uh, we did mow all the runway as well as the exterior of the airport, and basically Fort Clark and Bob Atroy. A lot of people helped out on that, so that's, we got it on the schedule now, we'll be doing that. And when members from the airport committee return from being on their winter Texan uh, vacations, um, we're, I think we're going to be meeting with them because their um, agreement is no longer valid. We need to have a new agreement and some new arrangements at the airport. So um, that will be forthcoming when they all get back and we can meet with the committee. Uh, architectural. <coughs> Good morning. Uh, Lisa Vale, uh, standing in, I guess. <laughs> um, we don't really have much to report. We've been uh, passing permits, and you know, a lot of people have been doing a lot of work to clean up their properties. So, you know, and do remodels and stuff. So it's been, you know, real nice to see people. Now that the weather's cool, everybody wants to make everything nice. Um, we do have a couple of uh, vacancies on the committee, so we are looking for volunteers. Um, and the other thing is, is we have moved the meeting from Tuesday morning to Tuesday at 4 p.m. Um, so hopefully those people that have permits, it'll make it easier for them to to uh, to come in and answer questions if they need to instead of having it at 9 if they're working. And also hopefully, you know, maybe get some volunteers that... That, uh, can come in easier at four o'clock than nine, nine a.m. Oh. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. Any questions for? Okay. Uh, golf. <coughs> okay. Um, just uh, let you know, there's a uh, golf tournament this weekend. Um, it's a turkey shoot. It's a fundraiser, um, and the winning team uh, gets turkeys. There's going to be all kinds of different prizes. Um, we should be posting, uh, do we, Julie, did we get a um, <coughs> flyer? Can we get that posted? Because mm -hmm. okay. it is a fundraiser. So it's always a fun tournament. You bring your own team, not blind draw this time. And then uh, Chris Kringle will be coming up in December, and I don't have a date on that yet. Okay. Uh, preservation. Preservation uh, is going to be short today. We're going to be very happy. We have two things that have come up. One is that uh, MK Builders is working on the service club. They came in with a bid just over 6000 He did not, until this week, find the back door and the casing is all rotted. He said we need a complete new back door and casing and installer. He, wants, <coughs> he asked if I could request an additional $495 for that because it's in excess of the bid. So I figured I'd bring it to you now. You're all here. You can discuss it when you like and let me know. Send an email so we remember. <laughs> well, I was hoping you'd do it in the executive session. Okay. Okay. Well, it's just a thought. He's trying to move forward. Right. And he's yeah. you know found it. So I just thought I'd pass it on. It's easier than chasing you. All of you. <laughs> <laughs> um. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I know. It's just part of the job. Um, the other thing is I have fixed, uh, received a letter back from the Texas Comptroller of Public Accounts with regard to the Franchise Tax for the Preservation Corporation that never existed. Well, it did exist. They got it open and then people walked away from it. So they have approved all of the uh, tax returns. Those are all done. They now, uh, I have... Uh, I have, uh, I'm eligible to obtain a certificate of account status, which I did electronically and almost killed me yesterday, but I got it done with them. 
and now I, I have printed it, and I need to send a check for $4.95 to the Secretary of State's office, plus two more additional forms. I'm Julie, I'm about to come in and get help with getting them off the computer. I, can, I just have a minor system, nothing that dramatic. And, um, but the point is, is, and this needs to be done by 1231, or we start over again. 2021. So we were we're gonna feed her gonna be to the fire. I need approval for 495. I don't know where I get the money from. Do I get it from preservation or yes, it's a preservation issue. Okay, so I need to put in for a check request. Yes. Okay. <coughs> that's all I need for that. Um, that's it. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> okay, oh uh, exactly. She's on her way. <laughs> I wanted to remind everybody, um, we have recycling, really the reason is to keep stuff out of our landfill. And so I think somehow we need to encourage people to come and bring their recyclables because it's been kind of quiet. We have 20 volunteers um, who keep the place open, but we're not as busy as we could be, so I'm trying to get people to bring number one and number two plastic, steel cans, aluminum cans, mixed paper, and with that in mind, I have to say we'll be closed <laughs> November 26th, which is a Thursday Thanksgiving. Saturday following Thanksgiving will be open, November 28th. So. So that's it. One quick question. On your mixed paper, that includes like the cereal boxes, correct? Right. The gear boxes. The, right. the non-corrugated is also considered like magazines. That, right. Okay. Newspapers. You know, we have too much of that. Um, the way it works is we have to pay them to take it. Them meaning waste management company. So we have to pay $9 a ton for them to take mixed paper. But it's still better than going into the landfill. So, yeah, it's a real deal. A couple of years back, they used to pay big bucks for a mixed paper, but we're not doing it anymore. So, yeah. But anyway, the idea is keep stuff out of our landfill. Thank you. Um, it's very expensive to dig a new cell in the landfill, so this is really important. Maybe you just sit at a dispatch. This is where I have the towers and the <coughs> what? <coughs> Las Morris Restor Restoration Project. Good morning. My name is Chris Hale. I'm the chair of the Las Morris Restoration Committee. I'm going to give you an update of our actions, but also present a recommendation to you that requires decision by the board. First of all, on the activity, as you know from the prior report, we were successful in obtaining a grant to pay for the full, full blown engineering assessment of the structural repairs required. And as I think you understand from the previous reports, the the whole thrust of that full-blown uh, thorough assessment is to give us what we need to go forward and seek real money for the actual repairs. So that's in, in the works. The engineering company was scheduled to do that thorough assessment Monday of this week, but unfortunately they, for reasons on their end, they had to reschedule. It's now the week after Thanksgiving that they'll be here and do that assessment, and then we'll, uh, our committee will get into serious action of taking that report and going to um, targets of opportunity to seek money. We've had already, we've started having some discussions, and there's some very interesting and very encouraging, and, and I'd say even some exciting conversations that we've had as far as the prospects for being successful in getting the the full full fledged money located or grants to uh, pay for repairs but it's all just talk at this point until we 
get that work product, which is the scope of uh, the definition of scope of what the repairs are going to consist of. So that's uh, we're kind of hanging in suspension. Uh, of course, very curious as to part of that engineering assessment will be an estimate of what the repair cost is out to be. So we're waiting with not bated breath, but we're waiting because from that it de depends how big our committee's task is to. Um, try and grudge up the money to pay for the repairs. So that's update. Any questions, of course, that you have on that, I'd be happy to answer. Then we have a recommendation for you. One thing that we've been doing, our, our number one priority, of course, is the repair of the, the pool and spring structural issues. But we've also uh, been working on a couple of other things. and. One of those is the, um, we are the Las Morris Restoration Committee. Las Morris Spring is such an enormous importance to Fort Clark Springs. It's, for that matter, important statewide. It's the ninth largest spring in Texas. And so, related to Las Morris Spring is the historical marker that um, Mr. Hahn was able to get some years ago for free from the Texas Historical Commission's under toll store marker program or um, something like that. I forget the exact name of the Texas Historical Commission program. But that marker, as you know, sadly a couple of years ago was broken and uh, uh, backed into, I believe, by vehicle. And so it's been kind of resting in pieces. but. We've now gotten that repaired, and, uh, and we don't think it should just go right back where it was. I mean, our committee very strongly believes to put it right back where it was would be unfortunate for two reasons. One, it can happen again and might not be repairable on the next go around. And, uh, but even more important from, from our committee's perspective, it should be positioned in a place where it gets maximum visibility. It, the, the history of Las Flores Spring is so enormously important to Fort Clark Springs Association and why we're all here. We think it needs visibility commensurate with what the marker is communicating to people. So our recommendation is that it should go, if you, um, if you kind of put yourself in the place of standing at the parking lot as you arrive at the swimming pool. As you approach, there's a sidewalk that leads to a wall, and you can make a right or left turn and go down the stairs down to the level of the pool. Well, as you come from the parking lot on that sidewalk, on the right-hand side is a great big signage of rules for swimming pool in English and in Spanish. On the left-hand side of that sidewalk is a smaller sign that is about pool is closed for cleaning, or alternatively, no lifeguard swim at your own risk. And we think where that sign on the left, the cleaning lifeguard sign is, that's where this marker should go. We think that sign should be pulled and perhaps put over adjacent to the big sign. That, I'll come back to that in just a second. I'll say a couple of words because we have a we have thoughts on that, but the, our, our coming to you with recommendation and a request for decision is focused on where should this marker go. That requires your decision as board if it's going to go on Fort Clark Springs Association property as we're recommending. It requires your decision. It also requires approval from the King County Historical Commission and the Texas Historical Commission. So if you agree with our recommendation and make a decision that yes, this is where the historical marker should go and give your consent for it being placed on your land, then we would go and seek to obtain consent or approvals also from King County Historical Commission and the Texas Historical Commission. So we would that'd be our next step prior to the marker being able to be planted. And so our recommendation, just to kind of re, re 
state more simply. We recommend pulling that lifeguard cleaning sign and putting the Wasmore Spring historical marker there. Um, so that's our recommendation. We, we, we ask your uh, agreement to that. Now, we also, this is um, moving beyond the historical marker, we kind of think that based, you know, we met yesterday down there and confirmed in our own minds and made a decision on our recommendation. Um, and as we did that, we were thinking the aesthetics of that approach to the swimming pool, it's, it's a very beautiful approach. The architecture of those, of that little wall that you come to and then you can turn right and left. I mean, it's a spectacularly beautiful image as you come from the parking lot. As it is today, it, that beautiful image is cluttered up. As you come immediately from the parking lot, there are two side-by-side -side garbage containers on either side of the sidewalk. Why there are two, I don't know. Uh, but we think those should be pulled and moved elsewhere. And um, also, our thought would be that giant sign with swim park rules and the, the one that we're requesting or recommending be pulled, the lifeguard cleaning sign on the left side of the sidewalk. We think those should be together maybe somewhere not so up front, center, cluttering that view. But that's, uh, that's for you all to give thought to. We just think that it's such a spectacular, spectacularly beautiful view if you stand there. And of course, a lot of people that come to Port Clark don't actually go all the way down to the swimming pool. They're not necessarily going down to the swim. They're just driving down the parking lot, soaking in the the sightseeing and moving on. So it's such a prominent spot for people that are curious about the ninth largest plane in Texas. We kind of think moving that signage, the big sign and the lifeguard and, and pool closed signage, move it over closer to the, the shack, the, um, the, whatever you call it, the little building there, get it over close to that so that there's a an uncluttered view, viewscape all the way from the, down that sidewalk to the swimming pool. But, but that's, uh, we'll leave that to you all to give thought to. So back to, again, more simply to reiterate, we request your approval for putting the historical marker on Fort Clark Springs property there. And then if you agree, give that decision either today or whenever. We'll go forward and seek the approvals of those two entities, King County Historical Commission and the Texas Historical Commission, both of which have to agree to the removal, removal uh, moving of the market. Any Quick, questions? Yes, sir. Um, we have a lot of um, <clears throat> advertisement and stuff out there. You had mentioned it's the ninth largest. We have a lot of things saying it's the third largest. Mm -hmm. Can you explain? It's not. The, uh, I forget the exact pecking order, but you've got Comal, you've got uh, San Marcos, Good Enough Spring, which is under Amistad. Those are all bigger. Comanche Spring, the biggest, although it's kind of... It, it, and it, they're man-made? The pool. It's the pool. Oh, the, it's the, the third pool. Third largest. The pool is the ninth largest spring. Oh, okay. Las Morris okay. Pool is the third largest okay. spring fed okay. pool in Texas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to have to go home. <laughs> Okay, we'll take definitely take that under consideration. I guess it's working. And we'll have Alan take with uh, Philip go down there and take a look at the area where you're specifically talking about. Okay. And um, that uh, there's a little history behind that why the sign was there, because approval was sought from mud property, mud for, to put it on their property to bypass the board at that time. So um, I personally don't have any problems with it being on for property, but we'll have Alan take a look at what you're talking about.
with Philip, and then we can give you a decision. Very good. Thank okay. you. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate all the work you're doing on this yeah, committee. This absolutely. is very important. So we're trying hard. It's a big, big long journey, but yeah. we're working hard. Thank you. Long journeys are fun. <laughs> <laughs> Election committee. <clears throat> Election committee? Nobody. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, I just, um, I'll talk to the election committee because I thought they were going to have their um, time table for us today. So I'll find out what's going on. Um, bylaws committee. We are coming to the end of this. Okay. Um, I would like to start out with giving you a simple summary of the main changes that we're recommending uh, to the bylaws. There will be other small odds and ends, but it's the main ones that we would like to just run by you right now, initially. One, the appointment of a standing election committee appointed from September 1 to August 31st one full year. In the event of a future need of a special meeting, this committee would be in place to act quickly. That's the first one. Second, appointment of an alternate to the board after the annual election. This individual would be the first runner-up in the last election, would be acting as an apprentice to the board in a learning capacity, um, and would be available to fill an unexpected vacancy if one became available. Number three, the addition of Robert's Rules of Orders, Parma uh, Parliamentary Authority would become the new Article 8 of the bylaws. Four, the committee would respectfully request the board to consider removal of the old eight, Article 8 and replace it with Article 9 in favor of the membership voting on all future revisions to the bylaws. Um, and to add to that, consider Article 9 in the next 30 days and hopefully on, uh, and we could, uh, you guys would have voted or vote on this at the next meeting. That's a brief summary. Now, Travis is going to uh, give you guys all a red line copy of the changes. So it's easier for you to look at the document with our suggested changes. Um, Travis, tell me again, because I got confused with it. It's, it's um, red line out. There's three changes to them. One is the red line of the language coming out. One is the new language. Sure. So the, everything in black is the original text. Anything in red is an addition, and anything uh, anything in red and underlined is an addition. Anything in red with a strike through it is a removal. Now you're actually going to want to read these probably <coughs> during the next month. Um, we would like to consider Article Nine changes at the December board meeting. Um, and we would like to request that this be put on the agenda. Um, we would like to distribute your approved changes in a document to the membership, electronically or hard copy, because some people can't get it electronically, and schedule an informational town hall meeting for membership on, by January 16th to discuss these changes. The reason for that date is we would like to get these changes, if approved, on the ballot to be voted on by the membership. So, in accordance with Article 6, Items 3 and 4, place the proposed remaining changes to the bylaws on the written ballot for the membership to vote on for March, the annual membership meeting. And that's all I have at this point. Any questions? Not until we read it. Not until we'll go over it, but we will definitely go over it. If you have questions, we'd be more than happy as a group to come and chat with you. Okay. 
Um, you realize that uh, town hall meeting is a good idea. We've done this in the past, and the only reason we haven't done it but now is because of the COVID restrictions. Mm -hmm. Okay? So um, any town hall in the future while there's still COVID will also be restricted. Oh, it's, it would be restricted? Can we do it outdoors? Um, kind of depends on the weather. Right. right. And, and that type of a thing. But um, COVID is blossoming. Texas has over a yeah. million cases right now, so the town hall would be limited to the number of people that the governor allows us to have indoors. So that, so the annual meeting would be the same issue if we're still in the same yes. place? Yes. And we won't know that. We won't know that until spring. Okay. Well, we'll figure this out, but... Yeah, I mean, we'll still stream it and so forth, but yeah. where we can't pack 100 people into the... to do that. And here, with our vulnerable population, we do not. Do we that. could do it the same way that the uh, election committee is considering. Uh, was discussed in the community council that you could uh, submit a question. You know, say pick a date, and we're yeah. gonna and, and we'll have a meeting like you're talking about. We'll have to work that out. I yeah. just don't want because uh, we have to read this. Don't want to take any more time on it. But I just let you know that the reason we have not been holding town halls, even though they've been requested by some members, is because of restrictions on the number of people that we can have indoors. And um, even though we had the annual meeting outdoors, if you were there, you realize there weren't any people there. They watched oh, it yeah. online. So um, that's something we have to consider, but we'll have to work out those details. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Okay, um, community council report. Anybody can hear from community council? I can give a brief one. I don't have anything written down, but that's fine. Um, we had a great meeting this past Saturday. We're working for its projects. Uh, continue, I think uh, December will be Unit 15. Uh, we haven't had any response. We went around with a little notice, door to door, handing it to people, sticking it in the door, and we haven't had any response. So. We ask for it again and see if we can get it, but that's the game plan is to move there. And if we don't get any response, at least we're going to do the green areas and clean up uh, wherever we see a need that's not privately owned. Um, um, it confirmed that there's going to be no four car days, working on movies. It's pretty quiet. That's about all I got. Yes, Linda. Cool. Oh, wait, you. you Dustin Smith. Oh, sorry, I got that. That was the <laughs> one. I, I'm, I'm sorry. He came and had a great discussion about the hunt and about the benefits to the membership, uh, how inexpensive it is to go and hunt, and why they have organized things because of the the level of the herd and the animals. And it was very interesting. Thank you. You're more than welcome. Thank now you. you may sit down. Okay. <laughs> Okay, um, on to your agenda <laughs> items, um, we don't have any unfinished business. Um, we took no email votes that I can remember. Uh, new business, um, we are need a new website. Um, Alan, you're up. Huh. Well, we're working with our current website developer on uh, implementing and hosting a website that will give us uh, online booking reservations for both the motel, the RV park, and well as our camping. Uh, to redesign that, uh, the basic price is fifteen hundred. The online booking is fifteen or forty-five hundred. Online booking would be fifteen hundred, and it'll be three hundred dollars support per month. <clears throat> But the deposit of thirty-two twenty-five needs to be voted. And that's the deposit to get it all going. So the total cost for a year would end up being eleven thousand six hundred thirty-six eighty-eight. But that is with the three hundred dollar monthly fee, as well as uh, training for the uh, online booking and the redesign. So we got a comment. invoice there for what it will cost us. On the online booking, yes. um, so like someone books it up in the evening or on the weekend to get into our system, we're going to have to have an employee manually put it in so that way it gets into accounting. Well, 
And when they check in, it will be manually put into a camera. They can check in at the front desk. It will be, we can pull it up online from anywhere. But I know but with the online booking, though, it's not going to go. We're still going to have to have someone internally. You know how like we manually put stuff in QuickBooks? We have the black system, so there's people. That will always be until we get rid of that black system, yes. That will, that will have to be. Okay. We'll have to come in in the morning when we get our reservations. It will, it will change the. Uh, it's going to be just more convenient for, for the client, which is great. I mean, like for the consumer. Well, it will allow us to take reservations 24 7. <coughs> That's, that's pretty much the key is that when somebody's standing at the front door. It will also allow us to use third party uh, reservation formats like Expedia, Booking.com, anything we want to contract out there. Dustin? Yeah, I Maybe a little bit more complex, but right. you know, we, I, I, yeah, we would have to designate exactly uh, what stands we're going to open up, and that way they can see exactly what's available. So it's possible to do that. Yeah. It, would, it, would, it seems like if it, if availability was available on the website, mm -hmm. as far as what's booked, that would give the membership another opportunity to see where hunters are at, you know, what trails in the back are going to be closed on what days, and just another information avenue. I think once we get it set up, we can pretty much add anything we need to. Okay. Bill. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. I live in the 20th century, so this is beyond my scope. <laughs> Uh, my comment is, I think we need to join the 21st century, and if we want to market what we have here, we're going to have to have a website that um, is up to date and not archaic. Do we have the money in the budget for this? It's budgeted already. It's budgeted already? This was part of the marketing that was done. The two things I budgeted for the marketing this year would be website design and billboards. Okay. So it's all in there. Um, and he has, he's familiar with yes. this company, and so that, that's a benefit. Right. This is the same company we've been using. I mean, you've got a good website. Okay. Um, I think the one thing we did discuss is taking all your uh, HOA membership off and giving it a separate page that members can log into so it's not open to the general public. That We've been pushing for that for several years now. Okay. All right. Um, any uh, comment from the membership? Take I think it's great. <laughs> okay, there's one. <laughs> Anybody else? Ditto. <laughs> okay, that's two. <clears throat> All right, uh, do we have a motion to approve um, the use of uh, heavy metal design to redo our uh, website as, uh, as um, uh, proposed? So moved. We have one second. I second. All those in favor of? It passes unanimous, unanimously. Less absent. Director. Okay, on to um, this is a really important one. Um, next one is approved backup equipment from NetPro One. Somehow, during the last couple of years. The board um, canceled our backup computer system, uh, and with the cancellation of that backup system, also canceled all of our virus protection, which has made us extremely vulnerable. Don't know really the history. This is only what we were told by um, NetPro One, as they were asked to, is a money-saving um, move. Uh, to cancel our uh, backup and along with it the virus control. So this is something that uh, we have to take care of. We um, 
extremely important. The cost, um, $3,618.31. Alan, would you want to give us any more information on that on it, please? Okay, I've been working with them. Number one, establish the history, and number two, just exactly what the need is and what, where we need to go 